There are a lot of Christian conversions happening right now with public figures. Do you think that there is a mass movement in this country right now towards Christian conversion? The hearts of a lot of folks are there. Some of you guys just need to be in the same city for a couple months and wake up at the same time and do the same thing every day. Go outside, walk, pray, read your Bible, go to church every Sunday and just do those things. What I do think a lot of Protestants are doing really well right now is... So the Protestant Reformation is not... Rosan, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me. We were just talking election stuff. We were. That was, that was fun. It was a good episode. So guys, it check it out on the live, which we just did. This is coming out probably in a couple of weeks later, but check oh, out live for that. Sweet. Christian conversions. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of Christian conversions happening right now with public figures, mm-hmm. both to Catholicism and then just Christianity mm-hmm. generally. Mm-hmm. And you've had a lot of interesting interviews recently with some of these influencer types, mm-hmm media personalities who are doing this. I've had a couple too. Like I spoke with Tammy recently on the show, Tammy Peterson, the mm-hmm. wife of Jordan Peterson. But yeah, you cover this a lot on your show. And what what's your take? Very, very big picture. Actually, before that, for people who haven't met you yet, because you've been on the show a few times, but sure. give, introduce yourself. Yeah. My name is Ruslan, <laughs> podcaster, YouTuber. Check out his stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Ruslan KD on all platforms. And yeah. check out his oh, yeah. your And the Occupied Till I Come 60 Day It's very cool. Uh, 35 days in the New Testament, 25 days in the Old Testament with custom prompts for each day, journal, prayer request. We can talk about that later. It's very cool. But what I love about your stuff, Ruslan, is first of all, you have just great moral clarity on controversial issues without going hard right, go left. Like Mm -hmm. you're just right down the middle. This is the truth about these moral issues. And you do it in a really winsome way. But you're also interviewing all these people who are converting. Do you think that there is a mass movement in this country right now towards Christian conversion? I I would hope so. I think there's something happening, maybe a a great awakening of sorts coming out of 2020, the darkness that Mm -hmm. that was. It's kind of across the country, the lockdowns, and then going, wait a minute, we didn't really need to do all of this crazy stuff, the increase in death of despair, like all these things that have been happening, tumultuous economic times, cost of living. I think there's a lot of uncertainty and it's been that way for a while. And so I think that has actually caused a lot of folks to start exploring and flirting with Christianity through the door of darkness, like through the door of like, man, there definitely seems to be evil that exists. So if evil exists, then the opposite of evil probably has to exist. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I've been noticing across the board and I think will hopefully continue. What is the reason, would you say, for some of these more, these big air influencer types having these, I don't know, they call it white pill. What is it mm-hmm. called? God pill. God <laughs> pill. The God pill. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What do you take that? What do you make of that? I think it's great. I think God's always moving. You know, I think about the less, last great awakening we had, which was in the late 60s around the Jesus people, Jesus revolution, which is actually around here. It wasn't too far from where we physically are in Orange County of, of just a massive awakening that started in Southern California and then trans, translated to the rest of the country. And I think we're due for another one. And again, similar times, uncertainty, war, just a lot of craziness. And people came to Jesus in droves at that time. They did a whole movie about it, Jesus Revolution, Pastor Greg Laurie's kind of story. Um, and so I, I, I think that we'll see that hopefully fleshed out at scale, I hope. So I'm curious, like, where Jordan Peterson is going to land in his new mm-hmm. book, We Who Wrestle With God, how overt is he going to be? I think he's been kind of holding some of the cards close to him. I think that'll impl- oh, influence Oh, you think like- he's Jordan Peterson's holding cards about his potential Christian conversion in order to say it in the book? Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Interesting play. Know. All right, all right. Because when I talked to him, he was, first of all, way more gracious and, and gentle mm-hmm. and charismatic and fun then sometimes he comes across when he's talking about faith. Like when he's talking about faith, he kind of comes across like kind of grumpy. Professorial, yeah. strict. Yeah. Th- he was so high charisma, so, mm. so pleasant to be around. Mm. And I got the I got this as my opinion. I got the sense he was already there with Jesus and faith in Jesus and believing in Jesus and surrendering his life to Jesus. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, that's my impression. I think it's a question really between orthodoxy and Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Well, and by his, orthodoxy, I mean like the Orthodox Church, not yeah. like an Orthodox Christian belief. But yeah, so his, his wife is Catholic. She's Catholic. She she's became great. Catholic. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's she's awesome. And then and Jonathan then, um, Pe- 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 Peugeot yeah. is Orthodox, Orthodox, and I and think then, he's very close with Jonathan. And then his daughter is. Protestant and she's mm. very devoted in a church in the Arizona area mm. and very active. So I think people want him to put on a jersey 
and yeah. pick a side. And I think maybe some of the apprehension is he just doesn't want to pick a side. Pick a team. I think that, that would interesting. be interesting. You know what? I think I agree with right. you from from the little that I know. I don't yeah. know enough to have too much of an opinion, but I think that is a good theory. Yeah. I, but sense. I think he's, you know, we had a really cool conversation about Matthew 25 when it lays out living with the imminency of Jesus, with the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And then it goes right into the parable of the talents, which is really interesting. Jesus is going to come back and therefore live lives where you're good stewards and you make the most of your time, talent, and treasure. And then it goes right into uh, caring for the least of these on the final judgment. So it's no longer the parable. The end of Matthew 25, Jesus says, hey, when I was naked, you fed me. When I was hungry, you, uh, excuse me, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And so I just proposed to them. I said, what, it, what you say you don't know what to do with if the resurrection is real what if what we do with it is we live as if jesus is going to come back by making the most of our time talent and treasure pascal's wager right yeah, live so, as if there is a heaven and a hell because yeah. in case there is one it's a better deal than right. if there is one and you live like there isn't one yeah then you might go to hell <laughs> just like but, bad but, news i would say but help usher in heaven on this side of yeah, eternity amen. like help usher in the kingdom of heaven here and now i will be done on yeah. earth yeah. as it is in heaven yeah and so he yeah, was like good. he was like oh Oh yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And then he goes and he goes, You're gonna like my talk tonight. You're gonna really like my talk today. And this whole talk was about identity and how mm -hmm. identity has to be objective and it can't be subjective and it can't be about your feelings. And it was it was really interesting. So I'm i I'm really excited mm -hmm. to read We Who Wrestle with God, uh, and see where it where does he land, you know? And if he answers the questions more head on, uh he he'll kind of you know, Alex O'Connor Cosmic seems to be Cosmic Spectre when you did and YouTube did a great job of getting him to say like, if you had a time machine and a video camera and you went back in time and stood outside the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, mm. does Jesus walk out of his tomb alive after being dead? And his answer was, oh, I suppose so. You know, <laughs> so I think he's there. Awesome. But I think we all want him to be more mm -hmm. bold, and that's good. But I, I don't think he he wants to put on a jersey. I think that's the part he's probably like, I don't want to be your mascot. By the way, it's just, it's kind of heartbreaking that there's a jersey. Yeah, well, like, I mean that's how it comes off to, to an outsider. Like well, that. I but I'm just saying, like yeah. I my my one of my big passions, and honestly, one of the driving forces behind this show in many ways is Christian unity. Absolutely. I mean, we should all be under one church. Yeah. Now, obviously, you guys know, I believe that's the Catholic church, yeah. but we should all be in, it's one baptism, mm -hmm. one Lord, one church, one mm -hmm. faith. And the fact that we have so many, so many denominations, it's different to have spiritual gifts and expressions, mm -hmm. but to have these different theological differences that have splintered the church, I yes. think that's heartbreaking. Yes. I think we do need authority and unity under one. So, um, but that being said, it's good to see people moving towards Yeah. Jesus, who they believe Jesus to be, and his moral law, and this idea that there's a purpose for our lives that's, you know, eternal, and, mm -hmm. you know, we need to repent, like, those fundamentals of the faith, it's, yeah. and see movement towards that, and the culture is really encouraging. Exodus 90 has changed the lives of thousands of men, making them more spiritually, physically, and mentally strong, and more successful in their relationships, work, and life. Ladies, this is an amazing program to share with the men that you love. And men, if you haven't tried it already, now is the time. Exodus 90 was created by men for men and offers men a path to greater freedom by helping them temporarily detach from unhealthy habits and teaching them physical, mental, and spiritual toughness. This 90-day journey, supported by the Exodus 90 app and community, connects men with accountability partners and provides daily inspiration to strengthen their resolve and encourage them down a path of self-discipline. The results speak for themselves. 99% of men who make an exodus report a greater level of freedom than they've ever experienced before. For the men in our audience, I encourage you to join Exodus 90 with Monsignor James Che, the president of the University of Mary, who is the spiritual guide for Advent this year on the Exodus 90 app. Go to exodus90.com slash Lila to learn more about Advent on the Exodus 90 app. That's exodus90.com slash Lila to join men from around the world this Advent starting December 1st. Yeah, yeah. And so I think... He's there, I think. I mean, Russell Brand is definitely there. Like, I've I haven't seen a such a bold profession of. So you faith talked in with Jesus. Russell Brand. Yeah, Russell had me on his podcast like two weeks ago or something like that. A couple of weeks ago, we sat down, and I, I really wanted to get there in person because I'm like, I, I just. I'm all for making content, but like, I think you just need some friends that like, that don't need nothing from you that can just be around you. And he's, he really wants to hang out and kind of, you know, gets an, they did just move to Florida. So it's stuff's kind of chaotic over there in terms of just restructuring and being in America now. But we, I mean, we had a great conversation and he is 
all the way there. And he That's really great. came through the door of like just suffering. Like his, they had to do open heart surgery on his baby. Wow. Yeah. I didn't and, know that. Yeah, and in the Whoa. midst of that, in the midst of that. Is the baby he, okay? The baby's okay now. Everything. So he has amazing. one child. I think he has two or three. Okay. Is yeah. he married or? He's married. Yeah. Okay. He's been married Good for, for seven, eight years, something like that. Good for yeah. him. And in the midst of that, like he, the mm -hmm. doctors are like, hey, like, you know, the baby may not make it. And so oh. he has to like surrender that. And then at the same time, his name is just getting dragged through the mud with all these allegations that all kind of come out as he's shifting in more of like these conservative views. Like the, the timing of that was really bizarre, you know? So he's dealing with all these just gross allegations. And then like meaning, his baby- Meaning was the sense like the allegations were coming in Fast and Furious because that's how would it seem. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to because say that it's because maybe maybe there are legitimate people who have legitimate concerns over his conduct. I don't know, but the timing of it seemed odd, and that he, as he's speaking more from a conservative leaning standpoint, this is like a little over a year and a half ago. Around I think I want to say twenty twenty end of twenty twenty three ish, he is just getting dragged by the media for this stuff, and then like his baby needs open heart surgery. And so, like, at that point is when it's like, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. Six months later, he gets baptized and has been, I say, pretty vocal about his faith ever since. And he's hungry. He's, like, hungry. He wants to learn. He's excited. Um, yeah. I've heard some of the, like, when I see these celebrity conversions or media personality conversions or influencer conversions, I get excited. You know, you want to pray. We got to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have a contact point, reach out, encourage behind mm -hmm. the scenes, whatever. I don't know Russell at all, mm -hmm. but I've never met him. But I did see a lot of people criticizing, like you were saying, mm -hmm. that he was more using this as a way to, it wasn't so much that he started the conversion after the allegations, but the allegations were going to come. And so then he used mm -hmm. this, I'm converting to kind of refurnish his, furbish his image a little mm -hmm. bit, or kind of find a new audience mm -hmm. because the allegations were really serious. Mm -hmm. I have not looked into the allegations mm -hmm. And of course, there can be allegations that are true and someone can still repent and obviously start a new life. Mm -hmm. I would caution them being in public ministry. Mm -hmm. You know Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. if you're someone who committed sexual assault, mm -hmm. I don't know that you should be on a soapbox, soapbox ministering yes. to people yes. like that. You should, yes. you know, I think you you have a credibility issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what, but what is your take on all that? Well, I, I, you know, again, I sat down with a friend of mine named Shane Smith. I sat down with another friend of mine, um, uh, Alamante Films and these guys. Shane Smith's a pretty big, uh, like clean comic who recently became a Catholic. He uh, talks about it on uh, Prince with Aquinas's conversion, and and both of these folks simultaneously, same thing happened. Like all of a sudden, these crazy allegations. So I think it's tricky to know like that th what comes first, the mm -hmm. chicken or the egg. Was it the allegations, and then all of a sudden they're coming out in faith? Both of them would say no. From my understanding, you know, they would say no. Like I, I, I was already on this trajectory, and oddly enough, this weird stuff comes out, and some of it is. That, like they don't even they've never even been around the person like it's like really weird stuff that that comes out and again i'm not saying that there isn't a potential truth to that stuff i don't know but i do know that we've seen false allegations before with the johnny depp thing allegations are not the same as convictions and guilt and uh the me too movement some of that got a little wonky right, with right. Uh, res refusing consent after the fact like you consented yeah. and then you can relinquish consent after the fact and so you got folks that were living wild lives that were sexually immoral that were fornicators sinful as can get and I, I maybe there was lines crossed or maybe there was this weird like i felt weird about that after i already consented and therefore it's you know, sexual assault. Like I, I don't know, but I it's just such not a dark in, space. I mean, it's even, dark space. The, I, I don't know nothing yeah. about that world because yeah. I've been with my wife for sixteen years, together for twenty years. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I've never lived that life in that sense. So I don't even know any parts of that. And you know, I just know that there was this adage of like, believe all women, no matter what. And that kind of blew up in people's face. And so I, I and I've been confronted like close friends that are like, man, what's up with all these dudes becoming Christian and all these weird allegations following around. I just go, Hey, I, I don't know. You know, and I've, I've talked to all of them individually about these things. I haven't talked to Shane about it individually, but I've talked to, um, Russell, uh, on the podcast. We talked mm -hmm. about it. I've talked what did to, he say? He said, does he, does he acknowledge like, yeah, I lived a wild life and oh, yeah, I did bad. Yeah. Like, his, so his that's thing, part of his yeah, conversion. He, even he to said, say listen, that. everything about me is public. 
Yeah. I've always been very public. And so mm. when I was a, a heroin addict and a sex addict, I was very open about wow. that. And now that I'm on Team Jesus, I'm going to be very open about that. So I never did my thing in the past. That, that was more or less his explanation. Yeah. I've never been someone that d- lives two different ways and presents one way and acts differently behind the scenes. And um, t- c- connecting with him behind the scenes, I would say that's yeah. true. Like that's congruent. You know. Now, again, I don't want to speak on his behalf. Um, on on what those things are particulars, but I just find it very telling that all of a sudden, when someone doesn't have the opinion you like, all these then things are coming. Then, yeah, it's like the yeah. Harvey Weinstein thing, right? Yeah. Because he he was the one. I mean, he had such a like dirty history. Mm-hmm. I mean, according to the courts, mm-hmm. right? I mean, all of these awful situations, but he was everyone's best friend too. Mm -hmm. Like it was like the well-known secret, Mm. but because he was this kingmaker in the democratic world, like he fit the Mm. stereotype of like, I'm going to be a Democrat. I'm Mm going to, you know, donate to the Clintons. I don't know. Like we're all going to take pictures together and party. And this is the world we're in. And even though people knew like there was this understanding that people had that this was happening yeah. it didn't bother people enough at the time to yes. do something about it yes and then when it became in vogue yeah. and it, to call people out which by the way i think it's good that people feel a freedom to call people out for yeah. that i think that's actually a positive part of yeah. the me too stuff but obviously it can go too far yes to now these accusations are counted as like everything against a man when there's not evidence yes. or you can destroy a man's life just by an accusation etc yeah i go above and beyond to be extremely careful and i've always have in terms of even what situations i put myself in but i've been walking with jesus for 20 years and i got a little bit of wisdom in terms and you've of how got to a good navigate. wife and, that's and i got a like, great who wife knows, who's wise yeah i think Think this is a world that again I'm not super familiar with, and I don't know how it works. But even like the Diddy stuff, uh, I mean, people have been known about these parties and these ser- these orgies and all that kind of stuff. And so, like, mm-hmm. where is that line between consent and trafficking? And like, I don't know. It's over my pay- above my pay grade. But what I do know is that people did know about this stuff about Diddy, and they looked the other way. They it, it was it was all good. They got the models to, to come and all this weird stuff that was happening. Um, and then the Cassie thing seems to have opened up the floodgates, which is like good, like good. Like there's sufficient evidence that he is guilty, at least of some of the stuff that's being alleged about him, right? There's enough there. In terms of where those lines end up getting crossed, I just, I don't know. I've never been someone that's in that world like Well, it's just that. like a good, it's a good principle for dating. Yeah for friendship, for everything, like hang out with people, surround yourself with people, trust people that are trustworthy and that are aiming at good values. It's not like I sound like the grandmother, but it's like, this is the truth, you know? And similarly with men, like, I'm not saying that you can protect yourself from all sexual abuse perfectly Mm -hmm. by following some moral law. Mm -hmm. No, like sexual abuse, unfortunately, and, and, you know, harassment can happen to anyone, especially like, unfortunately, a lot of children, they have no power over Mm -hmm. that. Right. And Mm -hmm. in the Diddy case, there's apparently potentially kids that were involved yeah, that's nine year old super dark teen year olds yeah so dark yeah. lord of mercy I, I think i've heard people who say advocates have said something to the extent that whenever there's an imbalance of power mm-hmm. that that relinquishes consent right which is again for not, even two adults they claim for yeah. even two consenting adults meaning if there's ever a situation where a boss right has an affair with a secretary because of the imbalance of power that has technically turned right. into coercion and has but then you could lines. basically say like any sexual outside of marriage like very positive good loving marriage yeah. any sexual event that someone who's rich or powerful has is abuse that, that's a slippery slope unless, that logic. unless i guess with that scenario they're having the, you know they're fornicating with yes. someone of equal level of power but exactly. even then it's like yes what if it's a woman and a man right. like is the woman by nature less powerful yeah yeah, yeah. physically we're less powerful right. yeah I so, think, it, so it, it was, is a tricky it is a tricky this example there. was made in the context of if a pastor ever has an affair with a fellow congregant it's always abuse. That's how that example was made. Well, I it was, think it would it would definitely be spiritual abuse because they mm-hmm. have spiritual authority. Yes. If you're if they're not a minor, we're not yes. talking about something illegal though, yeah. Yeah. right? But I do think there's certainly really toxic spiritual abuse right. and like horrifically toxic when there's children involved. Of course, yeah. then it's also illegal. Yeah, but and then and then not to get too dark, but then there's the flip side of there there are women out there who like the appeal of status and power and right. want to be sexually intimate with people who have status and power 
and I don't know a lot of those women. Right. Like that's not my world. So again, it just, and there's I just different kinds of power. Cause yes. if you're very beautiful yes. or you're very charismatic yep. and you have a certain kind of power that is yep. not going to be measured by your physical wealth yep. or your physical status in yes. terms of like you have an institution or an organization that you yeah. lead. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it is tricky stuff, yeah. but you know, so, so again, like in that, the, are there women that just want to sleep with famous men? I, mm -hmm. I know those exist, we, right? That just yeah. groupies and that whole allure. So I don't know. I don't. Know. We're in an interesting time. So I, I hope and I pray that if there was wrongdoing, that that would be dealt with in a in a way that is you know compensating to the victims. But I don't know enough about it. But uh, and I and, and what I will say is I don't think the people I'm talking to are doing it as a smoke and mirror to rebrand their image because boy is positioning yourself as a Christian in today's climate, not a huge net positive or something that brings you status. I, meaning that I don't think Russell or Shane win by all of a sudden waving the banner of Jesus mm -hmm. over their life. I think it costs them way more than it helps them. And so in I think, terms of their businesses, you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't think your bookings go up and your re your revenue goes up to being saying, guys, I'm I'm sold out for Jesus. I believe in the Bible. I believe everything the Bible says. I think that costs not to way not more. to play devil's advocate. Because sure. I, I I think in, in many ways I think you're right. But I, I will say there is clearly the stereotype of the you know, snake oil salesman mm -hmm. pastor mm -hmm. who is using, and they're very charismatic, who's using the faith as a way to enrich themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is an accusation like that gets wheeled sure. against people like Joel Austin, et cetera, or yep. Benny Hinn and these yep. others. And, you know, but I will say I've heard and seen people who have been blessed by Joel Austin mm -hmm. and people who have been blessed by Benny Hinn. I'm not saying I agree with everything they do. I certainly don't agree with their theology, mm -hmm. but, and by blessed, I mean, encouraged sincerely mm -hmm. in towards doing good things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what your take is on that, but yeah, I don't know either of those guys. I and I don't, I don't, I don't have a read either. on either of those guys. I think when you see this sort of stuff happening in churches, I believe it's more self delusion mm -hmm. unless I'm going to intentionally deceive people. Meaning, I think o Osteen believes this stuff. Osteen says, mm -hmm. I think Benny he's Hinn, sincere. Yeah, I, th I think even Benny Hinn. I it's think he's sincere. just deluded and wrong mm -hmm. in some of his theology, but I don't think it's uh intentional because i don't know people's yeah. motives and yeah. and maybe because i'm naive and, and and this may be real is that i tend to just give people the benefit of the doubt and say i'm in good faith i'm going to believe you and until you prove me otherwise well i, I think what, what i mean this is also like a stereotype or, or um, this is true of personality disorders and again i'm not trying to like psychoanalyze everybody but sure. i what we do know as an example like i know there's a um, amazing, um, a lot of amazing people, part of the Catholic church, mm -hmm. Catholics, and they are part of this sort of an order of types, this kind of spiritual mm -hmm. movement within the church that was led by this very charismatic guy. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being a complete nightmare. I mean, mm -hmm. he was having, um, I think his name was Maciel and he was a part of the Legionaries of Christ. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of good fruit in the Legionaries mm -hmm. of Christ, but their leader, their founder ended up living a double life. Mm -hmm. He had, you know, women, multiple women in different places. He was abusive. He had multiple children. He's supposed to be a celibate priest. Mm -hmm. So he was living a lot. Jeez. And this came out and it obviously scandalized a ton of people, right. broke up the order in many ways, a bunch of people left, but held on to their, you know, their Catholic faith, but yeah. they left this kind of spiritual movement within the church, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, all that to say, there was a lot of theorizing that he had this personality disorder, not to Whoa. say that he wasn't committing moral crimes. Of course yeah. he was, yeah. but it's like there was such a, such a sincerity to him. Yeah. Like people who were in his presence are like, he just seems so sincere. He seemed yeah. so good, but he had this power to live this double life because he sincerely in whatever heart somewhere deep down he thought he believed in what he was doing i should mm. say he believed in what he was doing and it like worked for him psychologically even though it was so broken and bent that's dark it's dark what is that is that i mean what, what, what is that disorder i mean well there's the narcissistic personality disorder yeah. Yeah. which is everything's about you and you're really charismatic, uh -huh. but you want to just kind of surround yourself. And a lot of those people can live, end up living double lives. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the personality disorder, mm. uh, you know, the specific one that would have been yeah. given to him. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if it's like an alternate, alternate persona disorder. Or, yeah. I don't know what it, yeah. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I think that I have just heard this, that you can, there are people, what I guess what my, I'm saying this to get to a, finally to get to this point, which is we cannot read people's hearts. Mm -hmm. Right. We mm -hmm. don't read people. We cannot read people's hearts. We can judge their actions. That's right. 
And yes, you can really get to know someone well, like your child and mm -hmm. get to know their heart. Mm -hmm. And then you can help them understand their hearts, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about somebody who might have a personality disorder, maybe they were abused as a child or had whatever issues with mm -hmm. them and they're doing really bad things. Yep. Yeah, they should maybe be in jail. They shouldn't be in a position of authority. But to say like like to condemn their heart and to know what's going on inside the deepest recesses of their heart. That's not for us. Yeah. Amen. No, I think, I think you're spot on. Yeah. And that's the part where I just go, oh, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. yeah. So who are some other folks that you've talked to recently about conversions? Covenant Eyes helps men and women achieve victory over porn addiction by blocking explicit websites and helping you connect with your accountability partner. This is such a beautiful approach to ensuring that people can have victory over porn addiction. Covenant Eyes has a special program called Arise, which is a 21-day video series specifically designed to help Christian women overcome sexual addiction. Arise helps you identify the wounds at the root of sexual addiction. This is a safe and confidential community for support. You can get 30 days of Covenant Eyes for free by going to the link in the description and using the code Lila at checkout. Uh, I've talked to Tyrese. I tried to check in on him. He, he we, we went to his home, had a really cool conversation. That was that was interesting. Um, there was quite a few like. What, who, what's his background, Tyrese? Fast and the Furious, mm -hmm. massive R and B star, movie star. Very cool. Yeah. So he's been a Christian for a while, and he's just been more and more outspoken lately, and trying to figure it out. And so again, a lot of these folks, I'm just trying to just kind of be in their corner, you know. Like I don't really, I don't even reach out, or when they reach out, I don't even go in for the let's sit down and do a podcast sure. conversation. I'm just kind of like, hey, like that's good. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like I was just in Atlanta, and I and I hit him up, and I said, hey, man, like I'm here. Like, if you want, like, I'll just come by and sit with you. He was in the middle of some pretty gnarly season, in the middle of a divorce, and it's it's really messy. Um, and I said, hey, like, I'm, I'm down the street. Like, because I was doing another podcast with somebody. I said, I'm down the street. Like, mm -hmm. if you want me just to come hang and just chill, like, I'm like I'm here. And he's like, man, we're, we're, how long are you here? You know, so I have th these kind of relationships that are, to me, can I just be a good friend and just, mm -hmm. just hey, man, I'm thinking about you, praying about you. Like, let me know if you need anything. You know, those sorts of connections so that they know that at least they have people in their corner mm -hmm. that, again, like, I don't, I'm, I'm doing well. I don't need anything from you. I don't need a, I don't need, I don't need no clout. I don't need any economic opportunities. Like I'm just available as a friend. Well, I think it is. I mean, I, I do think legitimately it is happening that there are more people than I've seen in over a decade that are coming out and having these conversions yep. and are saying that they're Christian, you know, a lot of Catholic conversions mm -hmm. happening. People saying that they are their home. You know, mm -hmm. this is the faith. They want to live the faith. And then they're passionately sharing the mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I think it's having a trickle down effect. I do think there's something happening with Gen Z right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, some of the polling shows that especially Gen Z men, mm -hmm. and a lot of the people we're talking about are men, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A lot of Gen Z men are now the, the, the trend of them attending church mm -hmm. on a weekly basis is going up mm -hmm. instead of down. Yeah. Gen Z men, That's like crazy. young, young men. Yep. And I think shows like your show have a lot to do with that, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Like it's not so much, unfortunately, maybe the local church and the local pastor and, you know, the local parents, although God bless our parents and pastors, we need them. But I do think media has mm -hmm. such an influence and all of these shows that are being led by a lot of the men mm -hmm. that are more, I mean, red pill, not in the negative way, but the God pill. Mm -hmm are really having an impact. And yeah. you see that statistically, like yeah. we're seeing that in the data. Yeah, the data definitely seems to be showing that young men are becoming more and more aligned with mm -hmm. biblical values, natural law, whatever you want to call it, that there seems to be a, a shift happening. And I think that's that's a good thing. Like I'm excited about that. Like I sat down with a guy named Candy Ken, who's a pretty massive TikTok star, and he was a big YouTube vlogger, and he's gone all the way on the on the moral aspect like just all the way in and then he was i mean I, I brought him a bible like he didn't have a bible and so he was like he posted on instagram like my life is forever changed like with the bible i gave him i just gave him my my, my, my bible in the car awesome. in a prayer journal and he is like yeah he's trying to figure it out so i think you're right i think there's a lot of good things happening and my heart is like getting people into communities get people in your real life that you can do life with and you need to, you need to go to church like you need to go to church and practice your faith you need to 
get up and do the same things every day because a lot of these guys like their their lifestyle of like the hollywood you know it's it's like crazy sleeping schedules crazy travel schedules and i'm like some of you guys just need to be in the same mm -hmm. city for a couple months and wake up at the same time and do the same thing every day go outside walk pray <laughs> read your bible go to church every sunday and just do those things to start seeing that like spiritual maturity that you're designed because the hearts are there like the hearts of a lot of folks are there but we're, they're just living such stark contrast of lives and the way they move is is hard you know well and it's hard to like live vocationally mm -hmm. in terms of if you're meant to marry and you mm -hmm. feel a call to marriage and do family life mm -hmm. if you're kind of uh, at the whims of whether your career is like sending you all across the you know all the continents continents of the world across the oceans or you're just you know a crazy creative and so you're just kind of living your mm -hmm. crazy creative life mm -hmm. again not saying you should squash your creativity or never travel for work or not work hard but there's a certain rhythm to enter into so that you're able to live that more traditional, mm -hmm. which is not even traditional, just more natural life that de is demanded of you if you're going to have kids and a, and a marriage and a wife and everything. Again, not to say you can't travel with your kids. Mm -hmm. You can't do things that look a traditional and you can do that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, your life is not your own anymore. Amen. <laughs> and you've got other people that you have yeah. to care more for them even than yourself. Right, right. In right. the day to day. Yes. Um, I, I, I do want to say that like when I became Catholic, one of the things that struck me the most was in every church across the globe mm -hmm. on every day, the mass was being said, the same mass, mm -hmm. the same Bible readings, mm -hmm. the same sacrifice, like everywhere mm -hmm. you could go. So mm -hmm. there's sort of this groundedness there mm -hmm. where you didn't have to like search for it. It was everywhere in mm -hmm. every language, same liturgy, same scripture readings. Mm -hmm. And there's sort of this almost like bodily experience of like you, you go like the mass is going to happen with or without you. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. God doesn't, I mean, God uses his people, his church for Amen. the mass to, to celebrate the mass, the priesthood, but the mass is happening with or without us. Like mm -hmm. the church goes on yeah. and it's waiting for you yeah. and in every culture and every continent. Yeah. yeah. I think people need to be reminded that they're not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. God is the center of the universe and God established his church. And that is great for someone that is used to being the main character, like the main character syndrome is a real thing, especially with whether you're a micro influencer or like an A-list celebrity, like that's a real thing people are wrestling with. When you, you met with Father Ambrose, right? I, I Did, did no. I imagine that? No, did no, no. Meet I think he reached out. Oh, okay. I sat Who with Father with? Simon. Oh, Father Simon. That's what I'm thinking. Amazing. Okay, he is amazing. I think you had amazing. Father Simon on too. I did have Father. That's he what I'm great. thinking. Okay, Father yeah. Ambrose is no, great too. I think I, there's another priest that I'm having on the beginning of the, the next one. Father Simon is the Melkite, right? Yes. Melkite uh, the, priest um, what from San Diego. He Yes, but they're they're a part of the Syrian. Syrian. Assyri Assyrian or Syrian? Assyrian. I don't remember. Yeah. He's great. He, he is so cool. great. He brought how me holy that, water. How, that, oh, that how was I that conversation? Oh, he was amazing. He was so sweet. And we had a, a great conversation. The thing that I liked about him was that he was like, Zach went to a Catholic church and and kind, that's your yeah, great our guy. Host, yeah. And he kind of like told the story and it wasn't the most flattering, you know, and he's like, it's a snooze fest. And, and, snooze and, fest. And, and the Catholics were mad. Like our Catholic audience were mad. And I was but, like, but, but like, let's just be real here. The mass yeah. is not a song and dance for you. Yeah. The yeah. mass is, is worship to God and it can be done poorly yeah. in the sense that you can have a mass that is done in a very dry way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not great, like the, the, there's not a great fervor of the congregation yeah. and it's still the mass. Yep. It's still Jesus Christ. Yep. And I, but I think that just shows the humility of God, Yeah, the humility of God that he allows us to, he allows us the people uh -huh. to still come to him with our imperfections uh -huh. and our snooze fests. Mm -hmm. And he still will accept us. Yeah. yeah. And he still will die for us. Yeah. But frankly, like the yeah. sacrifice of the mass is for us for all of time. Yep. And he is still giving us his body and his blood, even though we are not, even though we are butt sinners. Right. So anyways, that's just. So what I appreciate about Father Simon is. Father Simon was like, come to my mass sack. He said that. He did say that. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, sometimes they're not good. Like sometimes it's not, you know, but more or less what you said, but like, yeah, sometimes people aren't passionate. They're not excited about it. The people, maybe they're in training and he was like, yeah, but well, you guys should come to, to my mess. Did you, was did like, you go? Uh, uh, we're, so we're working on doing a series of like church tours because we've been having these conversations. Oh, you mentioned that. So we want to cool. do a series of like church 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 tours and highlighting the different faith traditions and just kind of going into it curious. So we want to do like the mega church down the street to like the the biggest Catholic church here and just 
showing all the different mm-hmm. things and then having conversations. I don't know if you saw my blog with a vlog with Pintswood Acquaintance, but mm-hmm. like going through a cigar shop and like those sorts of like immersive experiences. So we are going to do Father Simon's. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, like my, the dream, I, I think that Christian unity is the key. Yeah. It's the key. I mean, people complain about the Christians are especially not. Especially right now. Yeah, especially right now. Like we could have in-house conversations, but, and not. Be, like, I want you to become Catholic. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not going to hide it, right? Yeah. You're already a Christian, yeah. obviously. But, like, yeah. I want, I want like, full unity. Yeah. Like, theological unity. Yeah. yeah. Under, like, so, but I, I'm just curious, like, what is your, what is your take on that? And you talked about this with Matt, probably, right? Yeah, we, we talked Did about Did you talk it. about theology with Matt? We, we talked about okay. it a bit. Um, we Heart Nutrition provides wholesome supplements and vitamins, and they have wholesome values. Not only does We Heart Nutrition use the highest quality research-backed ingredients that are always in the most bioavailable form, We Heart Nutrition is also unapologetically pro-life. In fact, 10% of every sale of their vitamins is given back to pregnancy care centers. You may not know this, but many of the major multivitamin companies are owned by corporations that donate directly to Planned Parenthood. With We Heart Nutrition, it's the opposite. It's not only a best-in-class vitamin, but they're donating 10% of their proceeds back to pro-life resource centers. We Heart Nutrition sells vitamins for women at every age and stage of life, including options for preconception, pregnancy, postpartum, and postmenopause. So go to weheartnutrition.com today. Use the code Lila for 20% at checkout. Now, when you place an order of $50 or more at weheartnutrition.com, you will receive a free signature bamboo capsule box. These boxes are adorable and make taking your vitamins or traveling with them easy. Check out weheartnutrition.com and use the code Lila at checkout for 20% off. That's weheartnutrition.com. I think... I get in trouble for ecumenical conversations with my folks. Oh, really? Yeah, because there some folks would be a little too, you know, a little too fundamentalist, a little yeah. too like the Catholics aren't saved, the Orthodox aren't saved, these mm-hmm. people aren't saved. That, and the funny thing about me is like if you if if you're coming from a Protestant tradition, and you're holding to sola scriptura, and you're holding to salvation by grace through faith alone, that means that salvation is not something that you're doing; it's something God did, initiated. However, you want to language that. So, if salvation is not by grace through faith, is by, is by grace through faith alone? Why would you assume that Catholics and Orthodox who are calling on Jesus aren't hmm. in? That doesn't make sense to me, right? Because it's not of our own doing, according to our actual tradition. And I would say Ephesians too, right? So, are they? Are you saying these are more five point Calvinist types? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five but are you? Calvinist. Are you not? Are you five no, point Calvinist? No, no, again? Yeah. no. I mean, I had a reformed phase fifteen yeah. years ago. Yeah. That was it. Was it was scorching hot when I came to the faith <laughs> earlier? But now, no, I'm I'm not a Calvinist. Yeah. Um. And so when I when I hear the feedback, I I just don't understand. That's not to say that it's not uh, nominal Catholics and nominal Orthodox and nominal mm-hmm. Christians and all the circles but i think right now is a time of hey let's lock arms and find values and issues that we want to sure. talk about and then we can talk about the differences the theological differences the theological yep, differences for sure. and i almost enjoy those like those are like in-house conversations mm-hmm. and i'm a I'm a bit of a debate junkie. Mm. So like, I like seeing like the best of the best from the Protestant circle go against the best of the best from the Who is the best of the best in Protestant, would you say? In terms of debating? Yeah. uh, Well, historically, he's a Calvinist and I don't agree with him on Calvinism, but historically it's been James White. Mm -hmm. He's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Um, He, he's kind of, his last conversation he he had with uh, Voice of Reason, he was a little sick, I think. So it wasn't the greatest performance. Uh, Gavin Ortland, I think Mm -hmm. does a great job. He's, um, I haven't seen his debate with Jimmy Aiken, but he has some really good Mm. debates with Trent Horn, Mm. um, and he leans into those conversations. So I say that to say that, like, I am a debate junkie. I love those conversations, and um, I don't care to have them, (laughs) like, because I because I go, I'm not really the dude that wants to debate Christians. Like, I like I enjoyed what me like on theological finer points. Yeah, Yeah. like I enjoyed what you and I did with. Adam 22 and Lila Rose and that whatever podcast mm. like that to me is where I'm like, oh, this oh, yeah. is my sweet spot because yeah. I can articulate the biblical mm. worldview in a way that makes sense. Now, we we start getting into, um, you know, the the Eastern Orthodox Church being the exact same tradition that the apostles established. And I go, hmm. I don't know about that, you know, and then the Catholics are like, and we have the Pope and, you know, uh, we, we are traditions have evolved a little bit and we've kind of, you know, and the, and the Orthodox are like, no, but you guys 
we have the real church, but we have the real church. And I just go, hmm, I like that. You guys keep fighting yeah. amongst yourselves because I just want to hold to a very simplistic gospel. Mm. Like I want to go when the apostles were around and who and their successors, Polycarp, Ignatius, those folks, um, Clement, the first pope, right? Like what was their faith like and how did they operate in a system that was oppressive to them and wasn't the most excited for Christians? And, and, and I, I love that. What theology do you have when you're before the lion? Yeah. You know, that's like, 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 and and, and how does church look and how does church look and how does community look? And I think when I, when I think about that, I go, okay, so the Protestant Reformation is not a, um, a way to say you guys are out. The Protestant Reformation is to say, hey, we need to always be reforming, right? We need to always be reforming. And I think there's a lot of beauty in the newer traditions that are being built. Because once upon a time, the songs that the Orthodox sing in their, you know, or services were new, right? They didn't they didn't come from heaven and right once upon a time those were new. Once upon a time the, the traditions were new. They were they were innovations, right? They those people, they probably would not like that word. And we, and I go, man, the hymns are beautiful. Like, okay. But I think we look down upon the innovations that are happening within Protestant circles. And we when we scoff at them, we go, oh, rock and roll church. It's like, stop it. You guys all like, well, yeah, I you guys all like the music. You know, like it, I, I was if just- it's beautiful music, it's yeah, beautiful music. Yeah, I, I was so, just in yeah. um, San Antonio, mega church, hmm. fits 4,000 people. Um, Chandler Moore comes out, does a beautiful worship set. It was it was phenomenal. He's doing hymns. He's doing gospel songs. He's doing CCM songs. I mean, and he's just pouring himself out to Jesus, right? And you see young people all over, and they're just pouring themselves out to Jesus. And I go, what are the songs we're going to sing 500 years from now, 1,000 years from now, right? Maybe it's a Chandler Moore song. Like maybe there's tradi- new tradition being made, new art being made. Um, even with, you look at the innovations the mega churches do, and I'm not a mega church guy per se, but I got a lot of mega church pastors on the technology side. Like the mega church is cutting edge technology more so than the world, meaning the the technology you're going to see of uh, lighting and screens and all that. And again, people could scoff at that, but it's like there's some real cool innovation mm-hmm. happening here that may not be for everybody. Fair enough, but goodness gracious, are they reaching people and and clothing people and serving mm-hmm. people and loving people and continuing on in ways that most people would like? Oh, you guys are rock and roll church, and it's like, yeah, you know what? And it slaps. And like, if we're going to talk about windows into heaven. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you sit through an hour of worship with Chandler Moore and not get a window into heaven through that. Well, you know? that's, I mean, the thing is like, at, at least I know in the Catholic tradition, mm-hmm. if it's a beautiful and theologically sound worship song, yeah. you're not like saying God is a woman or something sure, sure, like this, sure, right? Sure, sure. Although there are some like beautiful poems about like the feminine aspects mm-hmm. of God, but being a nurturer and like clothing you and, you know, you know, nursing, like God literally feeding us, you yeah. know, almost like a mother feeds the infant yeah. and all this stuff. Right. So, but that being said, so I'm not saying it would be even heretical to yeah. talk about like the feminine aspects of God, but that to be said, um, cause God is all one and he's all perfect. And you know, the feminine comes from God. Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. So he created it. All that to say, if it's beautiful, if it's good, if it's true, mm-hmm. it's it belongs. Yep. It belongs. Yep. Yep. And I love that view because and you know, Catholic really just means universal. Yeah. Like Catholic is not meant to be like, oh, we, that's we were all Catholic at one point. Yeah. And we yeah. And, and 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 in baptism we are one. Like mm-hmm. in baptism we are one. And so that's where you can have your praise and worship music. Yep. You can have it's just a matter of like where does it belong? Mm-hmm. Does it belong during the liturgy of the mass when mm-hmm. you're uh you know about to do a consecration? Like that's where there is a certain like there is a theology to this is where the liturgy comes from. Mm-hmm. But can you do I mean, I've been to like, I've been to Catholic conferences and certainly to Protestant conferences, evangelical, where there is praise and worship music mm-hmm. and incredibly beautiful moments happening mm-hmm. of worship, of sincerity of heart by sometimes thousands of young people or just thousands of people who sincerely are moved by the yeah. experience. And yeah. I've been moved by the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, how can you not listen to the oceans and not Oh my gosh. Shed a tear. Ocean slaps. Okay. Ocean slaps. I mean, yeah, I love uh Man of Your Word by mm. Maverick City. There's there's just some amazing songs that I would challenge those folks that are like, you got like go go sit with some of these records. Like go, yeah. go look up some of these records and and because I bet even Father Simon would jam to some of that stuff. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For I sure. mean, so we we don't have to like create we don't have to create divides where there aren't any. And I do love what you said about we can unite around these moral issues yep. and, and issues of really like what it means to be human. Yep. And it doesn't really, I mean, we do want to, I mean, I do think theological differences matter and Mm -hmm. people should talk about them. I think that is important. But when it comes to like 
marriages are falling, mm-hmm. failing, children are dying, yeah. fighting together, joining arms with everybody right. of good conscience and everyone who says, yeah, I want to fight this fight with you, yeah. I think is important. So. Yeah. And, and not to get too pragmatic, but I, I believe that when I talk to Orthodox folks, and I talk to Catholic folks, many of the prescriptions we're giving on a Christian mm-hmm. living side are, if not identical, very similar, whether that's financial, whether that's marriage, whether that's family, home, business, like it's a lot of very similar prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is we spend a lot of time talking about the differences in the theology, but the reality is there's people in all of our churches that are like hurting and need like the wisdom Lila has about marriage and, and like really reducing that to like the lowest common denominator and saying, hey, as a woman, here's some game I'm going to give you, right? And so that that that's you know that, and I think we all can gleam and learn from. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why I'm having we're doing our blessed God summit. Mm-hmm. You're coming to that, yeah. right? And like I, I don't know of any other Protestants, with the exception of Preston Sprinkles, who is having Catholics and Eastern Orthodox folks mm-hmm. at their events. You wow. know, and I'm like, yeah, and. I'm, I do end up at a lot of evangelical events because I was even like, I know you're I, in that you I, come from the world. I come from the world. Yes. And I also, because of pro-life, like mm-hmm. that's a very ecumenical space, which Absolutely. is really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Catholics and evangelicals constantly working yes. together, Orthodox yep. and people who are just kind of maybe non-denom general. Yep. So I think that, and it's a beautiful thing to see everybody working yeah. together. Yeah. And so I think that's like my heart is, Hey, we're in a very interesting time. We're in a time where there's massive despair mm-hmm. and massive opportunity. There's massive brokenness and massive beauty. How can we come together and say, uh, man, there's some aspects that the Orthodox really get, and there's some aspects that our Catholics get, get, and there's some aspects that Protestants get, and let's communicate those things and help people apply and do those things. You I, know? What, I, what I do think a lot of Protestants are doing really well right now which I I would like to see more Catholic Catholic parish ministries model after Mm -hmm. is certain aspects of community building where Mm -hmm. there's really this intentional focus. And and again, I'm not saying no Catholic churches do this or every Protestant church does this, but I will say in that world, there's so much, such an intentionality on let's figure out a way to really make the people here, the families here feel part of the community. Mm -hmm. I know that's really near and dear to your heart Mm -hmm. and what you do at your church. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the key because back to what you're saying earlier about men who are converting, like the big question of all these people converting, they're looking for, they need Mm -hmm. to change, not just an idea in their mind about who God is, but how they live their life. Yes. And you can't do that by yourself. You need to do that in community. And if you're going to pursue something like marriage Mm -hmm. and a family project, having kids, you can't do that alone. You need a community to do that. Yes. That shares your beliefs. Yeah. Yes. And amen. And I was just at, again, I spoke to a a group of pastors and church leaders at, uh, in San Antonio. And one of the things I, I was talking about, them is like, hey, um, the, the Catholics and the Orthodox, they're not afraid to call people to more. And we need to do a better job of calling people mm-hmm. to more, not less. We need to stop lowering the on-ramp to the lowest common denominator in the room and coddling people. No, like this is the standard. Yes, we're all going to fall short of the glory of God, but this is the standard. No, you can't sleep with your girlfriend and still serve in this church. No, you need to stop, repent. Don't do that no more. Uh, and I think Catholic and Orthodox folks, I feel like the standard is a standard. And like, you're either in or you're, or you're not. We're not going to lower the standard for you. And I think although in practice there can be issues too, even sure. in the Catholic Church. Too, meaning you can have you can have a priest who's well intentioned, who's mm-hmm. saying all these masses, and he fails to talk in his homily about certain more thorny moral issues. Even though the church's teaching is clear, yeah. he's not going to mirror that to the congregation because yeah. he yeah. doesn't want to deal with the fallout. So that yeah. does happen. Yeah, it does. But I mean, in terms of the hierarchical nature of right. what you that guys have, clear. Yep. like y- th- <laughs> these things are set. You don't, we don't get to decide, th- you know, these yeah. moral issues or these cultural issues. And we don't back down from it mm-hmm. from a hierarchical structure. And that's kind of what I'm telling a lot of folks in our circles is like, men need to be called to more, not less. Men need to be told, you can rise to the occasion. You're you're capable of more than what you think you're doing right now. You think that you're incapable of not being sexually immoral. No, God can free you of that. And so I think calling people, especially young men, to more, not less, mm-hmm. is something that I'm I'm telling my my people in my circles, like, hey, stop lowering the on-ramp. We're not coddling people. We're gonna call now. We we can have mm-hmm. compassion and mercy and, and be present and counsel and all that sort of stuff. But let's stop with this like Hey, you know, we don't talk about this issue publicly. We talk, these are private conversations. Like this has been kind of some of the rhetoric from folks in my circles on like public on. Like we don't talk about, you shouldn't have sex before marriage publicly, you're saying, or. The the issue of uh, LGBTQ. Okay. Was said. Like sexuality issues. This was said to Oprah Winfrey by a megachurch pastor about 
10 years ago, eight years ago by a mega church pastor. That's oh, something he we talked Meaning he wouldn't answer her about LGBT, like what the Bible says about this, because yeah. he didn't want to Because we want people to belong. You belong here. You belong here. You belong here. Um, and that's a conversation we have pub uh, privately and not have, and we don't make statements publicly, which is just wrong. We do both. It's like and, hide, and hide both. what the, the church and the Bible says. Yeah, it's yeah. And both. Yeah. We have conversations pri privately yep. and we have public stances, you know? So that's what I'm encouraging people to like, we can't, because it doesn't serve that person well. No, it doesn't. The, the LGBTQ person that comes and you're telling them, well, you, you belong, you belong, you belong. And then they're like, I, I, I belong. I can serve here. Mm -hmm. I, uh, oh, oh, not, not in this. You can, you can, you can, you can be on the worship band, but you can't lead a song. And like, how disturbing is that to them? Like you, that doesn't serve them well. That's that you're, you're kind of lying <laughs> by saying you belong, you belong, you belong. Up, but up until a certain point. And the, like, and the thing is like, of course, everyone belongs, but part of belonging is working together against what is sin. Amen. And attraction is not sin. Mm -hmm. It can be disordered, but yes. it's not sin. Yes acting out on Absolutely. a wrong, yeah. you know, attraction. And it doesn't have to be homosexual. It can be straight. Yes. You can be not married and act yes. out on a straight attraction. Yes. And that's morally wrong. Absolutely. So it's not like, oh, there's only sin that happens in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. That I mean, if someone's saying that, they are a hypocrite. Yeah. You know, that's not true because yeah. you can sin just as much as a straight person. Yes. You can yes. sin just as much as anyone yeah. because we all have inclinations or temptations. Yes. And we're like the Christian path is to pick up the cross and follow Christ yeah. as best we can. We fall down. We get up again. Yep. We ask for forgiveness. We get up again. Yeah. And I think saying that, that aspect, I think maybe sometimes what the church has done, not a great job as honing in on that issue too much instead of going, Hey, no, 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 no. All sexual perversion, all sexual activity outside of a one man, one woman marriage for one lifetime is out. Yep. All of it. And I think maybe we need to be more overt on that and less come down hard on this or don't say anything about this or, or worse, affirm this. You know, and that's that that's the tension. And so I yeah, I just think people need to be called to more. We need to be more clear. I think clarity leads to confidence, even for the LGBTQ member that at least they know, at least they know, uh, yeah, like I belong here and I got a seat at the table here, but I'm called to repent. And uh and I and I and I can't be living this lifestyle and be in a position of leadership here. Amen. Yeah. All right. One other thing I was gonna ask you about with this whole Christian conversion stuff is women. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of it happening among the men in the polling, the, the data shows that, you know, the Gen Z men are becoming more faithful. You know, they're going to church or mass or whatever weekly more than the Gen Z women. Mm -hmm. Oh, again, another project of the show, we do have a much bigger female audience than male, but we do have men who listen um, and more than like a chick show would have. We have, sure. I think it's like 30, 70 or maybe 35, 65 men, women for, for this show, right? And women? This is, 65 women? I think so. 65 that's, that's amazing. women, 35 men. Yeah. So we still have a lot of men, but great. it's more women than men. But I, I, I look out in like the podcast space and the new media space and I, I wish there was more stuff for women. Mm -hmm. I mean, there mm -hmm. is stuff, but I do think in the male, male oriented world, there are a lot of amazing leaders yourself. And I'm not saying you don't have women listening to you because I know you do, but th what is your take on that? Do you think that there is more of that is needed or do you think there's something else needed entirely? Like, how do you see kind well, of I, Christian female leadership yeah, yeah, I and think, the need for that in the media wor well, world? Well, one, I think YouTube is a male dominated platform true, already. Very true. So it's going to sway male just as it is. And I don't know those numbers off the top, like male versus on a macro. So I think there's already that. And men listen to podcasts more. And men listen to podcasts more. Uh, I think there's that. I think there's also the reality that depending on what season of life you're in, if a woman is in a season of life where perhaps she is a young mother, maybe homeschooling, right? Uh, perhaps she doesn't have as much disposable time to be consuming podcasts all the time. This is YouTube only videos. Instagram. Right. If you're a homeschool mom, you only have time right? for Instagram. A lot of times. <laughs> you know, like my wife yeah. doesn't watch YouTube at yeah. all. Like she does not watch YouTube. And, and to be fair, I barely watch YouTube because yeah. I'm a, when I'm not making YouTube videos, yeah. I'm a mom or I'm working for live right. action. So yeah. Right. And so I think it's there's, true. I think there's something in that because if yeah. you're a man, you probably have a commute to work, maybe 20, 30 minutes. It's a great point. You know, you're, you're driving there and back. Yeah. So I think there's that layer to it. Um, so like what maybe you're saying is that whatever kind of conversion is happening 
happening among women, it might be almost almost more organic or quieter Mm -hmm. than what might be happening among the men. I think so. And it might even follow the men a little bit because you're dealing with women who are just, their lifestyle is different innately because we can be mothers. Very, uh, yes. And and then if I would have to go a little deeper, I would say that there are women uh, podcasts and women influencers Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I think, how do I say this delicately? I think the You're women. You're just not good at your job. No, 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 just no, kidding. No, 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 no. That wasn't going to be okay. it. I do think I do think that about women preaching a lot of times. I think a lot of times with women preaching. It's okay, I don't think women can be priests. So <laughs> we are we are aligned to yeah, some degree on that of, uh, You know, Jackie Hill Perry and Lisa Bevere, they they crush it. But generally, they, are, they yeah, do crush it. They, they 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 preach really well. So I should have them. Jackie on the show. I I, I, I read her show. book, uh, Gay Girl, Good God. Yeah, really powerful. She, she's stuff. sweet. Um, I'm friends with her husband. So Preston's going to be at the conference we're doing. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So. I think that oftentimes the women who women want to hear from and are mm-hmm. experts again are busy doing the thing, the thing. instead of talking Such about doing the thing, right? Such and so, like, point. I stream Monday through Thursday, right? How many days a week do you guys come in and do your podcast? One to two. There yeah, you go. That's a that's a good you know? point. So if fun. you were to be like, I want to be a YouTube streamer, it's like you have so many other things going on yeah. in your real life, from live action to your and family. I kinda, and I kind of and it's not the day, the time and day of the day is not the same. We, we, the episode release schedule is mm-hmm. the same, but like for lives, I'll be honest, it's not the same. Now I have been praying. I talk to my husband sometimes about what would it look like to restructure our lives, where I just worked in this in in like a morning time. Mm-hmm. I would have to. It would it would affect my work at live action is the thing. Yeah. So it's kind of that's always our question of like how yeah. to like which ministry how what 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 to put our time into mm-hmm. kids come first, but you know how do we manage these other things? Yep. So so you're busy tough. being a practitioner, yeah. Right, and then yeah. Otherwise, and, what have I to offer? Like right. if I'm not serving if I'm not trying to be a good wife. Right. And right. I have the best husband, so he makes right. it. He does make it easy for me. Which, yeah. again, I'm not saying that to brag. I know that it's a privilege that I have. Yeah. And then I've got the best kids. But I mean, I've got children that I need to love. Yes. But that is my first priority, and yeah. I have to do my best at that. And yeah. I'm not saying I'm doing a great job, guys, but I'm yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's good. Like that's yeah. great. And so I think that's a really serious layer. And I think there are women that do a good job that are like the exception to the rule. So like, Girls Gone Bible is crushing mm. it right now, like touring and doing all that stuff, but they're two young single women. Yeah. So point. that already limits their audience, right? You, mm-hmm. you have to, I, I think they're single. Forgive me if you guys are watching this and I'm probably, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're both single. So that they, to, they're to, not married. They're not married. They don't have kids. Yep. So, they're too, so that already limits the authority they have and that they're probably not going to appeal to the 35 year old mom. And Lisa, you know? I've, I've talked to Lisa Bavere about this mm-hmm. and she had quieter seasons mm-hmm. when her kids were younger. Mm-hmm. She is on the road a lot now. She mm-hmm. has podcasts, she's speaking, she's preaching, she's doing all of this stuff, yep. right? But she's doing it at a level she wasn't doing, like the frequency of some mm-hmm. of the stuff she's doing now was different yep. when the kids were younger. Yep. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. So, and, and And I'm all, listen, I, this might sound crazy. I think that the quality of women's content is oftentimes better in, 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 in terms of like, you're a real authority mm-hmm. on the things you talk about, in my opinion. Lisa's a real mm-hmm. authority on things she talks about. So I'm almost like, you guys, off the, Jackie and her husband, mm-hmm. they have a podcast together. You guys are almost like the quality mm-hmm. is better. So the frequency is lower. I think that's okay. Where on the men's side of things, you got a lot of guys who are making content mm-hmm. that like, they don't, they, have, they don't got much going for themselves, right? They just kind of got lucky on YouTube. Not all, but generally speaking, this is more real on your this Your content side. is good, though. Like Thank Your you. quality Thank is you. really good, Thank and you. you've got the quantity yeah, going. Yeah, but I, so. was, I lived behind the scenes before I ever got on YouTube for 15, 20 years and, and never doing talked life, about my Being faith. a dad, being yeah, a husband. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Doing the things behind the scenes. And so I it's think a there's point. a lot of men's content that is not coming from the overflow of living a, a life that honors God and they, they're just kind of figuring it out as they go. And God can breathe on that stuff too. So what I'm saying is I think there's almost a, a, a lot of content for men, and um, but sometimes the quality of it isn't good. Maybe the frequency is high, but the quality of it is good. Whereas like with women, your guys' mm-hmm. stuff is way higher quality. It's actually from an overflow of the things that God is chiseling you guys into and at the end and so i think it's good like but but i do want to see like i think i wish i want lisa to have a million subscribers and just her voice speaking into young women's lives uh Mm. she was incredible on my podcast she's incredible you know so i i I think i think it'll happen as youtube 
goes more and more mainstream. Like the moment YouTube really replaces TV and Netflix, I think that's when we'll see the floodgates and you'll see more content from all types of people. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. That's encouraging. Thank you, Rasan. You're welcome. Thanks for coming on again. Thank Always you. Always good to see you. Keep this up the great, great work. And people, check this out. It's, it's a gorgeous journal. Do yes, I get to keep that? this is the 60-day devotional. It's so beautiful. So yeah, this is available <laughs> is this, whenever this comes out. This is available now. Uh, and yeah, I'm super proud of it. So yeah. It's beautiful. Thank Congrats. You. Appreciate it. A huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the largest religious network reaching millions of people with the truth of the faith, entertainment, and news. Check them out at EWTN.com.